In this video, I'm going to show you how to get every single one of the 24 starter Pokemon in the Indigo Disc DLC. Be ready, it's going to take a little while, but they're pretty easy to find once you unlock them. Let's dive in. All right, so if you just booted up your Blueberry Academy and you want to try to get the starter Pokemon in the wild, your Charmander, your Poplio, your Chimchar, your Chespin, all these different starters, 24 of them, you can actually find them in the Terrarium, but you have to unlock them first. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to advance in the storyline until you get the BBQs, those Blueberry Academy quests. You need to be able to do those quests to be able to rack up the points to ultimately unlock these different Pokemon appearing in the biomes. The best way to do this is with the union feature. Once you unlock those BBQs, you're going to want to connect to the internet and you're going to want to go to union circle and get three other people to join you to ultimately be able to throw down and complete these BBQs. It took me about 90 minutes of grinding with a team of four people to get enough points to unlock all of the starter Pokemon. There's going to cost 3000 points per biome to unlock the various Pokemon in those biomes. And you do have to do this piece first to be able to ultimately unlock all of these starter Pokemon. So again, I would say from start to finish of me starting the Blueberry Academy to unlocking all the starters, it took me about two hours. And then it took me about another 90 minutes or so to find all of the starter Pokemon, which I'll show you in this video. I was able to find every single one of them. I'll have timestamps in the description below, which will show you where each of them spawn as well. And I'll show you me finding them in case you get kind of caught. Some of them are tricky. They're in little caves. They can be pretty hard to come across. But once you accumulate 12,000 blueberry points, that's when you're going to be able to unlock the next part and unlock all four of these different biomes. You're going to do so by, again, kind of con continuing the story. You get to the point where you can go to that computer and ultimately they'll force you to unlock the throwing styles. And then from there at the bottom of the list, you can unlock each of these different biomes and that includes new Pokemon in those biomes. So it's a very simple process. It's just very grindy. I would recommend, again, getting a team of people online. You can use my Discord server, discord.gg slash a drive. You can go in there, find people to play with, go on Twitter, find a group of people to play with, but you have to have people in your union circle. You'll be able to grind out those points very quickly. It takes about 90 minutes, and then once you have the points, you unlock everything, and then you can find all the starters. I'm going to show off all the different starters I found and where I found them, but if you found this video helpful, be sure to like it, and make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. I post Pokemon videos all the time. I'll give you guys all the tutorials you need, so make sure you guys subscribe. YouTube tells me that a lot of you guys are not subscribed, so make sure you guys do that right now. Going in Pokedex order, Bulbasaur can be found in the coastal area in the top right corner of the Terrarium. You can find it taking up a lot of the map, so this one's really easy to find, and you'll probably find a handful of starters as you're doing this, because some of them will overlap. Bulbasaur is one of the easier ones to find. You should really have no problems coming across this one. Charmander is located in the Savannah part of the biomes, and you can actually access it right when you walk out in from the Blueberry Academy into the Terrarium, so that's where I found mine. It was pretty much right when I first walked out, but it's in that first main area. It takes up a huge part of the map, so it should be no problem finding this one either. Squirtle's actually in the canyon part of the map, so kind of the bottom left part of the map, and you can see it takes up quite a bit of the area, so there's a few different spots where you can find Squirtle, but again, this was not a problem. A lot of these are pretty easy to come across. You shouldn't have any issues. It does span a good amount of the map. Moving to Generation 2, we've got Chikorita, which takes up a lot of the coastal biome. It was a little tough to spot at first, but it does have a pretty significant presence in the coastal biome, so once you unlock it, you should be able to find it very, very quickly. Cyndaquil is one of the tougher ones to find. It's in the polar aspect of the biome, and it's in a tiny little cave all the way up in the northern part of the polar biome. So you're going to want to find this cave. You can always reset the spawns by going in and then leaving, but that's where you're going to find Cyndaquil. It's very hard to find, and it's only in that one spot in the map, one of the rarest spawns for the starter Pokemon for sure. Totodile spawns in a few different spots in the Savannah biome, all kind of leaning towards the coastal area. That's where you're gonna wanna look. I found it pretty quickly. It's in those little ponds. I found mine in the water. It was actually the last starter that I found, but it was pretty easy to come across. Up next, we've got Trico here, the adorable little gecko, and you can find it in the Canyon biome. It's actually located in the south part of it. It's got a nice little coverage area. Pretty easy to find. You guys should have no problems here either. We talk about some of these harder ones to find and Torchic is one of the hardest. You have to actually find it in the polar biome. It's incredibly challenging to find. You gotta go in the little cave with the Matang and you can find it in there. It was really annoying. It took me forever to find this thing, but it is hidden in that little cave. So keep an eye on that spawn. It's keeping warm in there. And this will save you a lot of time trying to find Torchic, that's for sure. Mudkip's another one where I was able to find it in a cave. It's in the coastal biome, and I found it in Torchlit Cave, which is actually a named spot. You kind of go up on the top of the mountain. There's a little waterfall and a little kind of hot spring there, some fire-type Pokemon. You could drop down into Torchlit Cave, and you're able to find uh, Torchic there pretty easily. 
or Mudkip there rather, actually. Turtwig is everywhere in the canyon biome, super easy to find. It takes up most of the map. You should have no problems finding Turtwig once you've unlocked it. Chimchar spans a lot of the polar biome as well on the bottom part of it, the kind of south part of the polar biome. It's everywhere. So if you're just kind of looking for some of the other ones, like you're trying to find, you know, uh, Torchic or something like that, you should come across Chimchar pretty easily. Piplup takes up a lot of the watery area in the polar biome, very easy to find as well. When you're on your way to find Cyndaquil, this should be really easy to come across because you're going to be in that same realm anyway. So some of these you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. Snivy I was able to find in the far northeastern part of the savannah biome. It overlapped with a couple different things like Sobble. Uh, there's a couple little ponds there that you can kind of look at. But Snivy has a pretty significant presence in that top part of the map there in the savannah biome. Tepig takes up pretty much the entire eastern part of the canyon biome. And it's also very much so heavily found in the southern part of the canyon biome. Takes up a huge part of the map. Again, another one that should be very easy to find. Oshawott, much like Piplup, is gonna be found in kind of the northern part of the polar biome. Those two you should find pretty much simultaneously just swimming around or walking around. Chespin is one of the interesting ones where it can actually be found in two different biomes, it seems, both the polar and the canyon biome. It kind of sits in the middle of the two of them, in the middle of the map of those two. So pretty easy to find. I didn't have any issues with Chespin. It's in a lot of different spots between those two biomes. Fennekin can be found in the savannah. You kind of have an easy landing point and you just go a little bit north. It can be found kind of in the middle of the savannah biome off to the western side of it. I was able to find it pretty quickly once I was looking in the right spot. Froki is found in the northern part of the coastal biome. There's a lot of watery areas up there, some like swampy type of stuff. Easy to find Froki up there. He's just hopping around looking adorable. Rowlet is legit all over the savannah. It's everywhere. Shouldn't be a problem to find. Like this thing spawns all over the map, the little owl, he's everywhere, guys. Litten is in most of the canyon biome. It's off to kind of the more western side of the part of the canyon and the northern part of the canyon, but it spawns everywhere in there, so it should be pretty easy to spot. Poplio takes over a ton of the coastal biome, so it's all over there. I mean, you should run into Poplio very easily. I was finding tons of them everywhere. Grookey's another one that you'll find in the coastal biome. I found luck on the beach. That was the best spot for me to find Grookey is just kind of resetting the beach. Scorebunny's all over the southern part of the polar biome. You'll see the little rabbit jumping around just don't get it confused for a bunnel bee. And last but not least is Sobble, which is located in various points of the savannah biome. You can find it in kind of the swampy, muddy type areas. Once you find one of those, like the one kind of close to spawn, you should have no problems tracking down a Sobble. And that's gonna cover finding every single one of the 24 starter Pokemon. I wanna give a big shout out to my Twitch chat for grinding with me today. Big shout out to Cerebi.net for putting together their Terrarium Pokey Earth page. Super helpful there. And I hope you guys have luck tracking them down. Be sure to leave a like down below if this video was helpful. Let me know which starter you're most excited to grab. And make sure you guys subscribe to the channel if you're new. That's going to be it for me, guys. My name is Dan Oskobay. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.